Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the American Theatre Wing's Masterclass Series. I'm Megan Jensen, Director of Programs for the American Theatre Wing. I'm honored to welcome all of you joining us for this evening's Masterclass, New Ways to Audition in the New Age, featuring Jason Michael Webb. If this is your first time joining us for a Masterclass, welcome. We're so glad you can be here to listen and learn in this supportive and creative community to hear from the luminaries of our industry. For more in-depth details on this series and other master classes we have launched, visit our webpage for the master class on our website. As you may know, the American Theatre Wing is a non-for-profit organization, and we sustain ourselves and programs like this series on charitable contributions. So if you're in a position to make a donation, please visit americantheaterwing.org and click on the donate button. If you're not in the position to donate, we completely understand these are difficult times. But we do ask when we release this masterclass recording on YouTube and Facebook, we would so appreciate if you would help us share it, spread the word, comment, and spread the joy of live theater and the power of the arts. Before we kick off this session with Jason, I'd love to take a brief moment to share the flow of today's masterclass, as I know we have uh, hundreds of uh, attendees joining us from, I think I saw three continents, which is amazing. Welcome to our colleagues from around the world. And we have a number of high school students, college students, emerging professionals, artists, teachers, board members, advisory committee members. It's so wonderful to have us all gathered here this evening. I'd love to uh, tell you a little bit about the students and young artists that you're gonna see participating in today's class. Uh, we're welcoming students from our Springboard NYC Acting Intensive Program, as well as our Andrew Lloyd Webber Scholarship recipients. And four years ago, the Wing founded the Andrew Lloyd Webber Initiative to support theater education opportunities for young artists and public schools around the United States with a direct focus to improve access, equity, inclusion, and opportunity in the theater. These training scholarships and university scholarships were established to bridge the gap between talent and opportunity, strengthening the pipeline to the professional theater for promising artists of all backgrounds. And I'm unbelievably thrilled to say to date, since 2016, we have distributed over 93 training scholarships and 18 four-year university scholarships. And today, you have the absolute pleasure of getting to meet our springboard students as well as our Andrew Lloyd Webber scholars, seven of them specifically, who are gonna be working on audition songs with Jason. Uh, it's now my pleasure to welcome to the screen a special Tony Award recipient in 2019 for his outstanding arrangements of Choir Boy, a composer, lyricist, musical director, producer, arranger extraordinaire, Jason Michael Webb. So Jason, please come Share your video, pop on screen with me. Here he is. Hello. Hey, Jason. How's it going? How are, are you joining you? us? Where are you joining us from? Beautiful downtown Los Angeles. Amazing. Yeah, well, I love it. It's a heat wave this week, too. So it's like we picked a good week. That's great. Well, thank you for being here. I'd like to take a quick moment just to share some of your incredible achievements at a, as an artist and leader in our field. We're so happy to have you in the room today and to work with you. And we've been honored to work with you for several years through our various educational and grant programs and events. You've created some of the most beautiful and memorable musical moments in our wing history. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and it, in addition to your Drama Desk Award for Outstanding Original Music for Choir Boy, Jason was the music director and conductor for the Tony, Emmy, and Grammy winning 2016 Broadway revival of The Color Purple. He wrote the music and lyrics for Kenny Leon's 2019 production of Much Ado About Nothing at Shakespeare in the Park. You're currently in development working with the National Black Theater and Apollo Theater for your new South African musical Wildflower, which you wrote the book, music and lyrics for. And upcoming projects are MJ the Musical on Broadway as musical director, co-arranger, co-orchestrator, music supervisor for Disney's upcoming revival of Aida. And currently you're working as the executive music producer for the MGM movie Respect, the film of the life of Aretha Franklin starring Jennifer Hudson. You're amazing. That, that guy likes to stay busy. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, you, and we get two hours of your time here today. So welcome, Jason. Thank you for sharing your time with us today. This is so Thank special and, and we're honored. Um, I'd now like to, to open up the room and invite our artists to the screen with a big welcome and thank you for sharing your creativity with us in advance. So artists come on board um, and they are our ALW scholars, Savan Askew, Jaheem Hugan, RJ Johnson, and Sydney Lopes, and from our springboard program, Taylor J. Mitchell, Alexander Rios, and Stephanie Vezquez. 
And now it's my pleasure to turn the masterclass over to Jason and have a really groovy session. So rock and roll and take it away. Awesome. Uh, how's everybody doing in the class? You feeling good? Awesome. Cool. Um, so uh, we, we had a little, for those of you who are watching, we had a little bit of a, um, a conversation before we came on. And I uh, told everyone that what I would do is start with the Q&A and then we would go into some performances. I have the impulse to jump into a performance and I hope that um, I hope that's okay. And I hope that's not an indication that things are going to go off the rails by the time we get to the end of the, the, the class. But, um, but some, there's something that's telling me that we should have a performance right now. And I'm, I'm interested in who might want to, who might want to jump in and, and, and give a go. Now I'll tell the people who are watching um, that what we'll, we're, what this class is going to be dealing a lot with is how to translate what normally happens in the audition room you know, back when we could be on audition rooms with other people, um, how that translates now into this new medium, which is, you know, basically it turns you into an, to an on-camera actor. Uh, so uh, you're going to be hearing uh, not live accompaniment, but uh, pre-recorded tracks that the singers will be singing to. Uh, and uh, we'll just start talking about uh, songs from there and talk about experiences and uh, what the songs mean and, uh, and how to deal with them in an audition room, all those types of things. And we'll just kind of open up the dialogue. Um, and please do, everyone who's watching, please do send in questions if you have thoughts. Um, we'll have time to address those as well. And anybody in the class should be like, I got a question, let's talk. I love questions. Um, so, uh, does anyone uh, in the class feel like, you know what, I want to just give it a, give it a go? Um, so let's do this. Oh yeah, Alexander, yes. Thank you. I knew I just had to give it a little room to breathe. <laughs> Don't be distracted by folks walking through my house, by the way. This is a community house, so it's like, you know, there's always, it's one of the things that I love about um, being artists is that we're, we kind of create our own family. And so uh, always having people kind of around community is just all part of it. So if you're going into that industry, get used to it, because it is all about family and community, that type of thing. Um, okay, tell us a little bit about the song that, uh, that you'll be singing for us. Great, uh, so I picked the song, uh, Games I Play from Falsettos. It's a song that I've, I've had in my book for a very long time since college. Um, I graduated from school uh, two years ago and I've been in New York as an actor ever since. And I've used it for a bunch of auditions. And it's funny, just recently, right before I mean, the pandemic happened, when I was in a lot of rooms, I, I sort of started like losing grasp on it a little bit. I don't know if it was because it, was, it had been a while since I'd done it, but just recently I felt like I need to brush up on it and get more connected to it because it's it's a song that I really like and I connect well with and I feel like I can do well, you know, in an audition with, so. Awesome. I love that you said connecting because that's one of the things I really wanted, wanted to touch on, that whenever, you know, as, when you go into an audition room, you are still an artist. Um, and so as an artist, you have to somehow connect with that material because it's your job to, you know, to send it to an audience. Um, so I love that you're talking about connection. Um, does the song uh, have a particular reason why it resonates with you or is it, nostalgic or, or tell me about that it, well it's a little nostalgic just because i i'm sort of like new to theater in a way i didn't stop i didn't start doing theater until later in college I, I was a i was an athlete my whole life and i went to my my college mainly for swimming and then i dropped out and then was taking classes and found theater so it, it was like one of those first songs that i really connected with and a musical that i really love now and it, i'm just like obsessed with it so it's it's probably definitely more nostalgic than anything okay yeah. great um, what I'd like to do, if you don't mind, I'd love for you to just, um, is it a cut or do you, uh, did you send the full, it was a cut? It's a cut. It's a, I, I may have, I think I sent you the, it may, the sheet music you have might be the cut or the, the whole thing. I'm not, it's, I'm not it's, the, it's the whole thing, um, cool. but, uh, but I'm interested yeah. in uh, the cut for now. Let's just run the cut down. And then I want um, each of us in the class to kind of be thinking, uh, think about lyric, think about story. Just kind of um, observe lyric and story. Let's, just, um, let's try that. And then we'll have a discussion after. I think I'm looking at the copy. I'm pretty sure I sent. It starts off on, it's page, page five. And on the, on the sheet, it says 45. So it's like, it's the third to last page. Great. And it's the fifth measure in, I mean, I start, I'm, I'm, there's a pickup at the beginning. So it starts with um, measure three, like dun, 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 and then right into it. Um, great. And you have the recording there, yeah? I do, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. It's yeah. Um, a lot yeah, yeah, awesome. let's run it. Volume should be good, so we'll see. All right. Great. It's tough with love. Love's tough to show. 
play again that music. It's a song that I've been waiting to hear for much too long. Here's ears to love. It hurts not to love him. It hurts when love fades. It's hard when part of him is off playing family charades. Ask me if I need him. Get him out of my way. These are, these are the games. These are the games. These are the only games I play. Yeah, great work. Um, now. What are some of the first thoughts that you have when you see that? And I'm, I'm asking it in the, and, and then I'm gonna answer it. Um, one of the thoughts that I have, um, just for all of us in the class, are the ratio of, um, and this is the technical thing, your performance was fantastic. Um, a technical thing is uh, how, how much, how, it's how loud the music is compared to your vocal. It's the same issue that you have in the room too. Like when you get an accompanist who's like playing a little too loud, it's like, how do you negotiate that? It's like all the problems that happen in the room get translated in an, in an exciting new way in this exciting new medium. So um, where, tell, talk to us about where the music is coming from in relation to where, like just the way your setup is. Like, do you have a laptop? Do you so, have a speaker, like a Bluetooth situation? Yeah, I've got this little speaker. I, I couldn't find my other speaker earlier. So I found this is like a, like a cheaper one and I have a better yep. one that's a bit louder. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I will say it was like, after a certain point, I couldn't hear it. Um, yeah. It was up all the way, but it's like right next to the to the laptop. So maybe yeah. if you want, I can try this other one. It was too quiet. Is that is that what it was? It was was it? No, no, no. Actually, um, I was going to say that the um, I was all, I was interested in the microphone that was that you were using, which I assume is the laptop microphone. Like it's the laptop. Own... Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Perfect. So for for what you did, I think it was it was great. Like the ratio, I think it, it worked out. I you okay. might be able to back the a little the back the music away a little bit, um, okay. just so that your voice is a little pops a little bit more because that's what you're selling. Okay, great. Um, yeah. So there's that, but um, also just in general for all of us, uh, laptop. Um, if, if we're getting coming into an age where we're going to be relying on this kind of virtual um, thing, we all should look into um, getting a microphone that kind of takes your tech a little bit above okay. what comes with a laptop. Um, so that's and that's for everyone. Uh, and th that could be finding just a really simple USB interface with a microphone that you can kind of feed into your, uh, like things for, I mean, I don't even want to necessarily say mics for podcasts because well, you yeah. eventually want to. I have a, it's called a Rode NT1 I use for voiceovers and it's actually mm. supposed to, it's, it's more so meant to be for, um, like singers for like recording at home. Um, yeah. probably should use that, <laughs> you know, yeah, but, you're a singer and you're at home. So I know. That, right? yeah, let's, My only that would be amazing. Position wise, because it sounds great when it's really close, but if I had an audition, let's just say like this. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? I see. I'm wondering. I see. Yeah. Yeah. You, um, got it. Uh, great. Okay. So let's, let's, let's put a pin in that just for a yeah, moment. <laughs> um, and I want to talk just for a second about uh, what's happening in uh, your surroundings right now, because you're, you're going to be a great example for us to use right now. The, I love the plainness of the background. The only thing that I would probably do is probably shift so that the, we don't get the door in the light. Yeah. I, I, and, oh, and the stairs on the other side. I see. I see. Yeah, that's um, kind of why. Just what, in case someone had come down, because you know I'm at my parents' house right now. But um, totally, totally. Um, like, but uh, and I don't. I don't mean to make you an example of this. I'm so sorry to put this on it's you. Okay. Um, uh, but I think for all of us in general, anything that's not. Um, anything that's not necessarily serving the story that you're telling, you wanna make sure that you eliminate. So none of you were doing this, but like if your cat is running like in, on a, uh, I've been in a class where there's been like a, a, a whole cat uh, situation and the cat was just going to town while the guy's auditioning. So those types of things um, you wanna of course uh, minimize, but any, uh, any type of distraction, you wanna make sure that people are focusing on what you're selling and what you're selling is you and your awesome talent. Um, okay, that song, uh, what is happening in that song? In terms, I mean, like from like the show itself or? Yeah, or, or however you're delivering it, whatever story you're telling, what is that story? Well, the story I'm telling, I will say like just doing it right off the bat right now, I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't think I had it completely in, um, but usually when I'm doing it, it, 
I mean, the, the story itself is about when you're in like relationships and sort of the, the push and pull you experience when, you know, you want to love someone, but you don't want to love someone too much, or maybe you're not ready for a, like a serious relationship. And the way I've been playing it is, you know, there's someone that I really love in my life and I don't want to lose them, but I'm also like, I want to be independent. I don't want to like buckle down yet because I'm young. Like that's, that's sort of the, the, the mentality I've had with it. Um, okay, great. Yeah. Great. Now, now each one of, um, when a character in a musical theater piece sings, it's because they, they reach, uh, well, norm, usually it, they reach such an emotional place that they have to sing. Right. Um, and so, and it's very specific to that moment. And so my question, I think, would be for everyone. I'm going to ask everyone this question. What happened right before you started singing? Right. I'm interested in, like, if there's a story that, um, that you're telling, if, uh, if you work out what happened just before you, you enter into that performance, there, all sorts of subtleties and everything kind of um, sort themselves out because you're, you're going to be so much more specific right. um, about the journey that you're about to take everyone on. If you start um, with a general understanding, then I think general might be the best that you can offer and you want to shoot for <laughs> more than general. So sure. let's be as specific as we can. So, so everyone be thinking about what may have happened just before you started your song. And it could be consistent with what the show that it comes from is. And if you don't know what it is, you can make it up. It's just as valid. It's just a tool that's going to make you get more specific about what it is, is that you're saying. Right. And just be really, really conscious about it. Even though it's, you may think, oh, it's, it's something that I do naturally. Like even still go through the exercise of, of figuring out what uh, happens right before. So um, what may have happened just before you started singing? That? I think with this one, it's something like a scenario that the, the lover like just got into a fight about, you know, about being serious or about not being serious. I, I think they're in a stage in their relationship where they could be like seriously committed to each other and they just had this fight and I just had the fight with them. And I, I think it like ended badly. So I've like left, like taking a walk or like, you know, I've walked down to like a park and I'm just sitting singing about, you know, talking to myself basically about what I'm going through mentally. That's probably like how Got I it. It for like a moment. So do both of you want the relationship or do you feel like it's over? Well, they definitely want the relationship. I feel oh. they want the relationship. I don't know yet if I want it to actually happen or not, if I just want to break it off. Got That's it. why I'm kind of like with this song specifically, it's hard because the way I've been playing it is at the end, he gets really like he wants in the way the lyrics are written. It's like, it sounds like he's like done with this person, but at the same time, he's still like singing about how they, he loves them. So I'm just trying to like come to terms with, you know, fighting that, that push and pull. And in the end, I, I, I think what I'm trying to say is I need to make a stronger choice at the very end of it to like say, okay, you know what? At the end of the song, he's broken the relationship off. Or no, maybe he's actually right. gonna start it anew. And I think I haven't done that before. So thank you, because that kind of just popped into my mind. Yeah, I just got a boop, laser focus. Yeah. So, um, so Ken, uh, do you mind singing, singing it again, even with that little bit of conversation? Like even sure. with that little bit of consideration, let's just see what that gets us. It's tough with love. Love's tough to show. Play again the music. It's a song that I've been waiting to hear for much too long. Years, years too long. It hurts not to love him. It hurts when love fades. It's hard when part of him is off playing family charades. Ask me if I need him. Get him out of my way. These are, these are the games. These are the games. These are the only games I play. Great. Now, um, Excellent job. That, that was the exercise that I wanted us to go through, but now I'm excited to share one more thing with you. And I'm sorry, this is just kind of how my brain works. Um, the, okay, these are the games. These are the games. These are the only games. So when we say things, like the, what we're singing is substitution for dialogues. And when we say things multiple times, there's, there's a different reason for each one. Right. Um, or we sound crazy. It's just like, <laughs> give me the book. Give me the book. Give me the book. Like, you know, it has to mean something different each time. Give me the book. Give me the book. Like, there's got to be... Um, so we know that the subtext is a little different. So that's the only thing I would, 
I would add that little layer in on the performance side. Yeah. Like just, just so that you're just much more clear so that we are very clear that you're clear that those have different meanings and, or that they're escalations or something right, that you're right. going further and further. It's going further for sure. Cool. Awesome. Uh, can I give you a break now? Do you mind? Is yes. that enough for right now? Awesome. Cool. We'll probably circle back in a minute. Awesome. Um, cool. Now for, um, for everyone that's in the class, I love that we did this um, so that we can kind of get an experience of an incredible performer who understands the material, knows the story, is able to piece together a what happened right before. So the performance is not, is not the question at all. Um, what I would love for us to focus on is, again, how do we take what happens normally in an audition room and translate that to what happens on the screen? Now, what, when I think about it, um, for me, it turns what's normally in, what is normally a for the back room performance into, uh, you know, a close up on, on, a, on television. So like everything that you do with your face counts, every, everything that you feel and that you emote that you might kind of get away with in a, in, even in an audition room for 30 feet away or 40 feet away, you might get away with it. You're under a microscope when, when it comes to um, this and not to hope that doesn't create anxiety, but it's actually a really, really beautiful thing that we get to see those details of your, um, of your gift and the way that you, you, you share it from up close. So we know exactly like the brand of, awesomeness that you're giving us. Um, so keeping that in mind that the slightest subtle movement, now not to say stay still, because you don't want to necessarily stay still, but you want to just be mindful of how you're using this new kind of box that you're in. Um, so uh, we, we already talked about uh, coming up with a moment before um, your song. So uh, I would love for, uh, let's say, Hmm, Sydney, do you mind going next? Awesome. Um, now, Sydney, uh, you're going to sing She Used to Be Mine. Yes. It's a, it's a gorgeous song. I love that song. Uh, now, before we even start, I, I love the red. I love the, uh, you know, this is so not distracting. It's amazing. Um, the song itself, what happens right before you start the song, do you think? So, um, right before she's kind of thinking back on her life and how it used to be, um, versus what it's turned out to be and um, who she's turned out to be with and just everything that's happened. And I think sort of my interpretation of what's happening before goes along like the same lines of, wow, this is very different than what I used to be. It's kind of like thinking back on, oh, this is how it was in high school or, oh, this is how it was in middle school or elementary even. You know, it used to be like the good old days now, adult responsibilities have come along and it's a choice of, do I do this or do I do that? So I think it kind of goes a little bit hand in hand with what's happening. Okay, do you, do you know what happens in uh, the show right, right, right before she sings the song? Yes, her husband found out about the money she had been hiding. That, and out of that, what happened? Could you walk me through, like walk me closer to the song? Like he found out and then it caused an argument or he found out and... Yeah, it caused an argument and he took it from her and then that's sort of when it led into it. Oh, and he left her alone. Yes. Did you leave her like alone to sing the song? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, and is that what uh is that the moment before that you carry into your performance? Yeah, and I, I sort of use what I, I think about as well and I sort of like mesh it all together. So yes. Great. Using your own experience in there. That's that's so good. For television, it's like you have to bring yourself. So, and it goes for theater too, but especially in, in a medium like television, everything is about like who you, you bring who you are. Um, and so I love that you're saying that. Um, so yes, let's, let's run the song down, thinking about that moment before and bringing who you are. Let's try it. Awesome. Thanks. And did you want the cut or the full thing? Sorry. Um, I think let's try the cut to start. Awesome. And now I've got you, and you're not what I asked for. If I'm honest, I know I would give it all back for a chance to start over and rewrite an ending or two for that girl that I knew who was reckless just enough. Who gets hurt, but who learns how to toughen up? Who gets bruised and gets used by a man who can't? 
can't love and then she'll get stuck and be scared of the life that's inside her growing stronger each day till it finally reminds her to fight just a little to bring back the fire in her eyes that's been gone but it used to be mine that it used to be She's kind, she is lonely. Most of the time she is all of this mixed up and baked in a beautiful pie. She is gone, but she used to be mine. Yeah, gorgeous. Um, talk to me about now. I'm I'm going to ask you just kind of. Uh, this is a more. I'm, I'm going to ask you about you. Um, talk talk to me about where what your training is and um, like what your singing experience is. I just I'm just curious. Right. Um, so I went to Pebble Brook High School um, in Georgia, and I did performing arts there for four years. And prior to that experience, I studied a little bit. Um, I had vocal lessons sort of throughout middle school, but before that, like I'd been singing for a while, but I had never like had training. Um, so I started in like, middle what, school. Like singing in church or like singing just out in um, community events? Just community events and sometimes singing in church, but not all the time. Um, and middle school is really where it like took off with like training, training. Got it. Um, and your training was what, like classical or? It was... No, it was more of just someone telling me how to breathe. Um, just really the basics of um, you do this, that. And then when I got to high school, that's when classic classical training was taught. And now I go to Berkeley College of Music. Um, yeah. Great, so awesome. Um, beautiful. Uh, I mean, you have a gorgeous voice. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out just like a plain way to say that, you know, like your voice is gorgeous. I'm sure you've heard that a lot. Um, uh, I think sometimes uh, in your conversation just now, I asked you a couple questions about you just to kind of hear the cadence of your speaking. Um, and there's a very, there's a beautiful gravity to the way that you speak and a beautiful cadence to the way that you speak. And I think that you can carry that into even songs like this. Toward the end of the song, you kind of loosened up the rhythms a little bit. And I know the song, but I don't know it so obsessively that, um, like I'm, I'm usually obsessive about how, like the details of, of rhythms and music, but this one I don't know well enough. But I feel like at the end, you did a beautiful job of loosening up the lyrics so that it was more conversational. And you can apply that more to the rest of the song, I think. Um, yeah. Some, and I, I think that you, you disappear into the safety of your eyelids sometimes while you're singing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so the sound is really, really gorgeous, but the whole gig is about connecting. And so this character is, is, is doing an action. The character wants um, something to happen or wants something uh, or wants to change, you know, something. So, and they need to get that from somebody else. And that might be the audience. So keeping your eyes open, I think, as, not as much as you can, but if there's a moment where like, it makes sense for you to do something, then fine. But I'd, I would encourage you to keep your eyes open because it, it'd be, it's such a beautiful connection when you do. Um, Sarah Bareilles is such, I'm a big Sarah Bareilles fan. Yes. And, I, and she pays attention to, uh, okay, some of the, I'll say it this way. Knowing when to speak is great knowing when not to speak is also great. And so when she writes music, the notes and the rhythms and the, and you know, all that stuff is great, but the pauses also have value. Um, and there's a line in particular, which I'll use as, as an example, and then she'll get stuck. What, um, what's the line that right before Lynn, and then she'll get stuck? Um, I wrote down great pause before that line. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna find it. Um, she's three nine, there you are. Yeah. And then she'll get stuck. Where is she at? She is messy too most of the time. Um, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going blank, but I know this. I'll figure it out. 
Um, yeah, it's, uh, oh, there it is. Oh, it's um, she'll get bruised and get used by a man who can't love. And then she'll get stuck. It's like, th what she's saying is enough. Like, she'll get, uh, she'll learn how to toughen up when she's bruised and she'll get used by a man who can't love. And then she'll get stuck. It's like, that's an escalation. And I think keeping in mind that that's an escalation, that's going to affect the way that you deliver it. Um, now, this, this is going to be an extreme example, and it's, it's kind of the example that I use. It's the blanket example that I use. I can say I, lo I would like a big, fat, juicy cheeseburger. Or I can say I'd love a big, fat, juicy cheeseburger. You know, so there's like a – I know how that person feels about it. Um, and I think carrying – we haven't talked yet about text and subtext and context, but um, what, what we're talking about right now is, as you guys already know, subtext. So how does that character feel about what's happening right now, what they're saying? Um, knowing the moment before is, is, is great, but it should kick you into a whole, like, a whole trigger and heap of understandings. And, you know, when we say things and when we're passionate, we don't have time to, we don't have the luxury of orna ornaments and uh, vocal runs and all that. So even keeping clear about what that story is um, and getting to the heart of what the action that the person is trying to, um, to do, um, I think is what you kind of keep your focus on. Uh, can we, oh, I also wrote down, oh, your long notes are gorgeous. I'm gonna go into a couple of performance things right here, I hope you don't mind. Your long notes are gorgeous and you do a great job of figuring out how to switch them up um, and let that be a lesson to all of us. If, you're, if there's a long note, please do something with it. Unless the point of it is that, you know, like it, it's supposed to be a long kind of sine wave where it's just kind of steady. I think that uh, if you're doing, a long note, straight tone it, and then put some vibrato. That's like the easy way out. But whatever, or come up with some kind of way of keeping the note active. Uh, otherwise, like you want to tell an audience what to pay attention to and why to still be interested. And, and making a long note active throughout um, is something that's going to help with that. Oh, and then I wrote down loosening up the rhythms toward the end was great. So um, when the music lightens up toward the end, where is it? Oh, she is messy. It's like, as, as you would say it, she's messy but she's kind, she's lonely. You think about it, well, most of the time, like maybe there's a thought that happens in between. Find those moments, especially now that you're on a camera, the camera's gonna be able to pick them up and you don't even have to overdo them. Okay. You can kind of just feel them and kind of let it happen. Um, so I know that's a lot to throw at you. Um, would you feel comfortable singing it once more? Sure. With, with, with some of that in mind and we'll see what happens. Sure thing. And now I've got you, and you're not what I asked for. If I'm honest, I know I would give it all back for a chance to start over and rewrite an ending or two. Pause. 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 Um. I'm, we're friends now, so I'm just going to ask you direct questions. Do you mind? Okay. Are you being polite? Are you, are you singing so that you're not too loud where you are? I want to consider that. Um, no, I'm, I'm free to be as loud as Oh, great. You can. can you go further by bringing it all back? For like, I want to know that's sure. where we're heading. Yeah, just okay. kind of go a little further with that. Sure thing. Thank you. And now I've got you. And you're not what I asked for. If I'm honest, I know I would give it all back for a chance to start over and rewrite an ending or two. For that girl that I knew who was reckless, just enough, who gets hurt, but who learns how to toughen up, who gets bruised and gets used by a man who can't love. And then she'll get stuck and be scared of the life that's inside her, growing stronger each day till it finally reminds her to fight just a little to bring back the fire in her eyes that's been gone, but it used to be mine. Oh, that it used to be She is 
lonely most of the time she is all of this mixed up and baked in a beautiful mind she is gone but she used to be mine. yeah uh, now i'll say that was gorgeous and there were, okay, am I the only one who thinks there was a difference between the first time she sang it and the second? I, there, I think there was a big difference. And just the, the eyes alone pulled me into the story. So I think, keep, please keep that. I mean, your voice is gorgeous. You know that your gift is special. So you can deliver that thing with confidence. Keep those eyes open. Don't, yeah, don't hide behind that. It's, it's, it's too special. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got for that right now. So um, and if we need to circle back, yeah, beautiful job. Um, Jaheem, I'm coming to you next. Um, but I wanted to um, talk just for a minute um, uh, about something that, that occurred to me while we were doing that. At the end, when I said to loosen it up, with a pre-recorded track, you're still basically kind of slave to what that person recorded. Um, and so if we were like in a rehearsal room, I'm going to walk back here and tell me if you can hear this or not. Um, but... Uh, at the end, oh, oh, they did it in F, got it. Um, so we would probably, for the end, loosen it up completely. Can you just um, sing the very end? I know I'm far from you. Hey, y'all, hi. Sure, um, can we sing it in that? Just sing, uh, yeah. Okay. Can you hear that okay? Is that kind of yeah. loud enough? Great. Um, and I'm just going to kind of block chord, and you take whatever tempo you want. Take as much time as you want, go as fast, slow, whatever you need. Okay. So we're coming from uh, uh, whatever that is. Sorry, sorry, from she's messy. She's or... messy. Yeah, I think. Okay. I think. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I will tell you right now. I will. I never get a lyric right. That's just <laughs> part of my charm. So I'm. I'm gonna say a wrong lyric. So I meant to say, used to be mine. You sing it much better than I did. But here it is. And she is messy. She is messy. But she's kind, she is lonely, most of the time she is, all of this mixed up and baked in a beautiful pie, she is gone, but she used to be my I'm just kidding, but yes. So my point is we would, um, if we were in the room, we would be able to take a lot more kind of ebb and flow time with that. So um, finding the cut that you're comfortable with and then finding out how you'll do it and then sitting with the accompanist and making sure that that, you know, that work is done. Okay, that's, that, that was the, the thought that I wanted to share. Thank you, Sydney, excellent Thank work. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, Jaheem, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. Awesome. Um, okay, so you're going to do uh, Hold Me in Your Heart from Kinky Boots. Yes, sir. Um, talk to me about that song. Well, now, and it could be like why you love it or what the song's about or what happened before, whatever it is. Just give, give me your thoughts. Well, the moment before, um, Charlie and Lola just like got in um, a huge like fight, you know. Um, Charlie kind of came for Lola, you know. And um, I love this song because I learned in life that we all we tend to always fall like our moms our dads for all the mistakes that they make and like are waiting for a certain apology or acceptance but you're gonna be waiting for a long time honey so sometimes you have to learn to forgive others to help strengthen yourself and like grow in life and like keep your like you know move on and move forward so i feel like this song like you know is lola really like learning to like i'm gonna hold you in my heart that i love you we did have some good moments because and we also tend to look at the negative instead of like and forget the positive in life so i feel like this is finally the acceptance of accepting that you know he's not gonna like accept me who knows when or how or if he is but you know i'm gonna hold you in my heart because i love you so I, that's why i love this song Okay, I love that explanation, and I love that wisdom that you you're pulling out of it too. Um, okay, I'm I'm interested in jumping right into that thing. Do you mind? Hold me in your heart, just 
Yeah, great job. Um, great range. I wish I had that um, that note. What note is that? Mm, is that the G sharp? I'm gonna go back and check. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, this is my obsession. Yeah, G sharp. Love it. Yeah, great job, guy. Um, okay. Now I'm gonna use. I'm, I'm trying to use everyone as an example, and I hope nobody minds because you're all so awesome. Um, okay. When you're in an audition room, this is a general kind of thing. The audition doesn't start when the company starts playing and you start singing your song. It actually starts when you walk in the door. Um, because everyone who sits behind the table, I hope this is like, you know, I'm just going to tell you. We, we, it's not even really a secret. We all want you to win. We want you to be awesome. And we want to stop looking for who, who, we, who we're looking for. Um, and, and I'll say for myself, I, I get excited about the talent that comes in. And... Uh, and we're looking for talent that, that fits the, you know, the bar of, of gifts that we're looking for, but also who we want to hang out with all day and have a great time with. And who's going to be, uh, you know, sensitive to, uh, to what's happening in a room. Uh, they're not going to be sensitive about notes. They're there to come and play and the fix and whatever and do it. And um, Jaheem, the, the answer that you gave me, the energy that you gave me when we were having a conversation about the song, that's a very attractive thing that, um, that all of us should carry into like that good vibe i if an identical person came in did the, did the same type of um, performance but was a little bit kind of dry and standoffish or didn't kind of give me positive a love vibe i might be more willing after once we look at the resumes and everything is identical i might be more willing to go with someone who i want to hang, hang out with the whole day so be somebody that people want to hang out with it's just kind of a life lesson actually this class is actually about life not music um, but yeah, just kind of be somebody that people want to be around. It's, it's a really, really awesome thing. And it actually augments your talent. Um, so, uh, yes, the, I wrote down great range. Um, now, uh, some of the, I'm going to nitpick and I hope you don't mind because you're already so good. Um, some of the runs, um, this is so super nitpicky, but I want you to have it. Um, at the end of your runs, cut the last note short. Don't land and sit on it. And that might be an exercise that you, you may have to toy around with, but it's going to kind of add to, um, it's going to show your dexterity a little bit more, more clearly. Um, na, 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 na. Uh, and now you said right before they had just gotten, um, Charlie came for Lola and uh, they, they got into a big thing and then the song happens. And He's, or, or Lola singing it to him. Lola, um, before, like right before the song is happening, Car I mean, Charlie is calling, um, trying to pick up, get Lola to pick up the phone to apologize and the curtain, as he finishes apology and the curtain rises and Lola's at a hospital and she walks out in distress and looking you know, all good and that's when she starts the point. So it's kind of- Okay. So if you were to walk into an audition room right before the song starts in your head, what happens? And it might be just what you told me, but I just want to make sure that I'm hearing it right. Like right, right before you start singing, I, what I'm trying to say, it has to be something that's, I think, um, uh, what's your answer? I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop talking. Uh, what would you say? Um, like if I was in the audition, I just walked in and I'm about to sing the song, what would happen? 
I mean, what happened right before the song starts? Like you put the book on the table, I mean, on the piano, you tell the, um, the, you give them whatever notes, and then you're standing, and you have to think in your head, what happened in this song or in this scene right before I start singing so that you're informed with some specificity going into the song? So like, what's that moment that happens right before for you? For me, uh, the, the moment before is me looking straight ahead and in the nursing home, there's my father. Okay. Great. What I get, it's that sense of imagery that I'm looking at him. I'm like, this song is dedicated to you. Because you think what? Well, like, what? What about your father? What What are the feelings that you have about your father that make you want to sing this or make you need to sing this? To even though we had to let him know, even though we had our faults and our differences, and I know you really know how to deal with someone, you know, like me. I um, I would say that this is my song to you and to tell you that I forgive you. Forgiveness. Great. And this is a moment that you've probably been thinking about and waiting for? I'm waiting for is this? Great. So this is a big moment. Yes, sir. Yeah. Great. Um, can you sing it one more time with that in mind? Don't give up on me. I won't give up on you. Well, you took my hand, taught me how to be strong. That's where I picked up when we went all wrong. I know that I hurt you and you hurt me too. But you mean more to me. I must mean more to you. Yeah. I mean, what a, yeah, it's such a great shape. The cut is perfect. Um, yeah, and I, I love what you're doing with the end, um, with the note, because I realized that the, the excitement in that note is in the tension that I can't believe you're hitting it. And then uh, eventually when like you move in and then you move back and then the vibrato kicks in, it's like you're making all the right choices. It's great. Um, great, good job. That's what I got for you for that. Awesome. Thanks, man. Good stuff. Um, okay, let's us oh i don't want to talk actually right now just kind of in general um when you're selecting your song i know we're hopping around a whole a whole lot but i want to kind of give you as much as i can um when you think when you're thinking about your song you want to pick a song of course that is consistent with you know you wouldn't audition for oklahoma and hamilton with the same song right so you want to know what gig you're going in for um and so you want to have a book that kind of reflects all, all that you know all the great things that you do um so knowing how the song serves the audition is one thing. Now, knowing how the song serves you is another. So you want to make sure that you're choosing a song that you yourself feel amazing about. So if I, one, of the, one of the great tests that I use for anything that I create is I'll play it for someone and I'll, I'll, my body is going to tell me how I feel about it, um, whether or not I feel like I need to apologize for it or if I feel dope about it or if, you know, th there's just, your body will be honest with you about how something is, is being received, record it, and listen back. And, and if you're not transported, one of the things that, um, you know, I, my, a lot of my work has been in the church. I, I, I started playing when I was four, and then I started working for churches when I was nine. Um, and so I did that until a couple of years ago. So all, a lot of my um, experience with music has been very emotional. Um, and now emotional from, you know, my training was classical and there's a certain emotion in that because some of that music came out of the, the church at that time, but also, uh, the music that I saw transform people's lives, like right there in the room, 
taught me that there's an emotional connection and there's a power to music and, and all that. So I'm always looking for, um, you know, what th I'm always looking for that. So there's an emotional relationship that I have to music. Um, and I, if, if music doesn't ha doesn't move me, I feel like there's, there's another step to go. So listen back to your performance and see if it moves you. And if not, you can start to hone in on what are those, those points where you say, Ooh, Ooh, that was a little this, or I feel like, you know, I could have done better there. Use yourself as a guide. Um, uh, and record yourself. Now, that will tell you whether or not, I call that like finding a win, putting a book that's going, uh, putting a song in your book that's going to be a win for you. Um, Jaheim, like the, the songs that we've, um, Alexander, the, Sydney, the songs that we've done already, those are like wins. You, you can put them because they have a very specific um, thing that they showcase for you. They're great. Um, now, once you have your win, once you have your win, then you're understanding what, uh, doing, the, doing the detail work on, on what that win is. Text, context and subtext so text is just looking at the lyric like what is the actual words on the page what are they saying getting a, a great understanding of what that you know what what that material is and what that's going to teach you now context you want to um understand what that story means in a bigger picture now you might know the context like it may come out of kinky boots and you know what exactly what happened or you may get a song from some vocal teacher or some show that you've never heard and you didn't know the context and you have to do the homework yourself, kind of like what we've been doing a little earlier um, of coming up with your own context, coming up with your own moment before, um, because it's just as valid because the, the, the gig to, you know, the reason why you're finding a moment before or thinking about context is so, again, you can find out what, how to be very specific about what it is that you're saying. So um, understanding what the context is, even if you have to fabricate it yourself. I don't know anything about kinky boots and right before the song, um, I, I, I feel like the, he's singing to a pet that, you know, I, you could just change the whole thing up and the song is still super valid. Taylor, I think I'm coming to you next. I want to give you a heads up. Is that okay? Awesome. Great. Um, so figuring out what that context is, I think, um, is going to be super important. And then once you understand the world that it's living in, what is the subtext? How does that character feel about what it is? You know, the big, fat, juicy cheeseburger, like all that work. Uh, like w what's coming out here is a product of the specific like the digging work that's um into the detail uh into the text the context and then the subtext what is that um you know and she used to be mine how does she feel about that guy who um who bruised her and used her it's like i you should assume that i have never been in love i don't understand what it's like to be bruised and used and all that you have to it's your job to show me um even if you know there, there's some I, when I was younger, I, sometimes I would listen to music and I would just cry. I would just cry, cry, cry. And I wouldn't know why it was affecting me that way, but it was affecting me. So that's also, that, and that's the, you know, that's evidence of a good artist. Um, that's also, like, you're an artist too, and you guys are great artists. Part of your job is to affect people, and sometimes they won't even know why. But the way that you do that is to do the homework yourself. Like you look at, the, you know, a, a great actor like Viola Davis, like she'll, if you watch some of her acting, there's so much specificity and so much beautiful, like, real life that comes out of it. And it's not like, yes, yeah, she's talented and she's amazing at what she does, but also there's homework and detail work that went into that. She didn't just look at the script and, like, bam, it was there. It's like, why does uh, this woman who this man is telling her that she needs to get an abortion, how does she feel about that? How does she feel about that man? Why does she feel that? What kind of history? How long have they been together? How, what does his mom think? What is like going through asking why, like that kid who always asks why and it's never ending. You got to do that and get really dig down into the detail of that subtext. And it makes all of your work so much more specific because then you apply that to how you're performing. Um, okay. Um, so that's my, my spiel about that. Now, Taylor, the reason why I came to you um, is because uh, we talked about doing the song River Deep Mountain High, which actually, now that I'm talking about it, I just want you to sing first and then I want to talk about it because you sound awesome on it. And I want the people to hear you. Okay. So just go right into it? I think so. Do you mind? No. I, I mean, I always get confused on it. I don't mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mind. I know, right? Oh, oh you know, I, I shouldn't tell this story so publicly. I'll, I have a story for you guys after. <laughs> remind me. Okay. About, about I don't mind. Just remind me. Okay. Sorry. Do you mind if I tell this story? I don't <laughs> I didn't mean I didn't I didn't mean to do this, Taylor. I'm so sorry. I'm glad that we're friends already, and, and, and I can make this change on you. Um, okay, I I had um, I did an event. I'll say I did an event for a very well-known um, 
performer. And um, afterwards, there was a big photo. And this is like a, a, a performer who's iconic and, and who you, you just would love to be next to. Um, and, uh, and so I, I played a pretty decent sized part in putting this, uh, in putting some of the, the things together for the thing. And so I went to the person and said, you know, I, uh, after the, there was a whole photo line and, and they held court and did the whole thing. And so I said, um, you know, I would, do you mind if I, yeah, I, I put together this, such and such in the program, um, and it was such an honor, blah, blah, blah. Do, um, do you mind if I take a picture with you? And the person was like, yes, and walked away. <laughs> Aww. That's all I got. Okay. okay. That's the story. That's the story. There's no real point. But well, actually, the point is, you just never know. And, but right. in that moment, I thought to myself, you know what? You have earned it. You don't have to give me no picture. You don't have to talk to me. Um, it, it, was that, it was that kind of, you know, you look at people who've done such amazing things in, in, uh, in the industry and, and broken down barriers and, and done the works that you're glad got done before you got there and you just marvel at it. And so if they say, no, I don't want to take a picture, it's like, okay, cool. And the one, I got a great story. And two, I was this close to you and that's actually what I wanted anyway. So cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. always, find, always find a cool silver lining, even if weird stuff happens. It's like, everything is for a reason. And, and again, I, I don't mean to, to keep saying this song, this class is about life and not music, but in everything, it's like, Everything happens for a reason, and if a door closes, another one's going to open. Okay, that's all I got. Taylor, let's do River Deep Mountain High. <laughs> no, I would have did the same thing, because if they would have said yes, I'm like, oh, you want a picture. It, yeah, it just always <laughs> <laughs> That would have been awkward. That would have been bad, because then I would have thrown my arm around, and it would have been the whole thing with security. <laughs> yeah, that would have been bad. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, River Deep. Okay. okay. Awesome. I think it Thanks. was loud enough. Okay. It was. It was great. Okay. When I was a little girl, I had a rag on. Money brawl I ever owned. Now I love you just the way I love that rag on. Only Second verse, same as the first. Yeah, excellent job, excellent. Um, to not totally off topic, but a little bit off topic. Do you sing, um, I'm sure the answer is no, Piece of Sky from Yentl? From where? Yentl, it's, an, it's a Yentl, Y-E-N-T-L. It's a, it's a Barbra Streisand film from uh, like the 80s or something like that. It's got some gorgeous music in it, and you should sing Piece of Sky, I think. Someone, someone in the world at home may, may disagree and then send me emails or whatever and tell me that I've led you astray. But, but I, I mean, I hear your voice and I'm like, and, and the length of that last note. Oh, you know what you do? Find Piece of Sky on YouTube. Right now. Just watch it. No, I mean, not, not, not no, oh. no, you know what? I do want to kind of stop class and watch it together, but we're not going to do it. Um, Sometimes find Piece of Sky on, um, from the film. She ends up on a boat toward the end. And there's a big crane shot. She starts singing, you know, she holds the note for like 19 seconds, like 22 seconds or something crazy. But it's so impressive. Um, and, and the reason why I'm reacting this way is because the note that you held at the end, it appeared to have enough ease that you could have gone, you could have gone a little longer. And that's what was really, really impressive about it. So uh, it just struck me. Oh, Peace of Sky. She should have that in her book. So you wouldn't ignore that completely if you hear it and you hate the song. But it's, for me, it's one of those songs that I – whenever I need to feel in a good mood or just really feel emotional or something like I put that thing on because she is perfection and that the writing is perfection. The orchestration is perfection. It's, it's, 
it, 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 in, of, it, in and of itself, it's a masterclass. Um, so find that. Sorry to divert so far from what we're supposed to be doing here. Um, okay, River Deep Mountain High. Um, first, oh, second of all, I'm obsessed with your vibrato. Great job. Um, to God of the Universe, your mother, or whoever made that thing. Vibrato is very, very nice. Um, uh, what happens? I'm going to ask this. This is like this is a pop song. Um, so for you, it's a little bit of a harder gig to figure out what happens right before a pop song if it's not written for a story. Um, so what do you think might have happened before somebody says, "When I was a little girl, I had this rag doll." Well, I think that um, Jason, I think really that's why I really like love River Deep, why I love Tina Turner. But when um, I first really sat down and listened to the lyrics, I said, "Wow, there's really a story in here." that mm -hmm. you can play with and that you can relate to, even though like the power of Tina's voice and like just the um, instruments behind it gives it so much like, oh, this is my song. But yeah, like, yeah. when you listen to the lyrics, it's like, wow. And I think um, it's that moment where like maybe, well, for me, I feel um, it's that moment where I'm not, I'm, I've never been aware of real love through humans or real love of attraction. And I'm at that moment where I'm like, I think I'm in love. I think I'm in love. I think this is, this love is related to love that I've had with things, um, with objects or maybe with, um, with, with objects, with things growing up. But this is, this is what love feels like. And I don't know what to do with it, but I'm going to sing about it. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Um, uh, can I mean I don't I don't I don't even know in this world what's appropriate or not appropriate anymore. But I'm going to ask a question. You've kissed someone before, yeah? Yeah. Have you had your first kiss? Great. <laughs> um, that I I remember. You know, listen, you just don't know, right? You don't. Um, know. But you don't. And I want to be, you know, of course, respectful. So um, I remember what it. You know, I always feel like not always, but I feel like I was one person before my first kiss and then another person after it's like the, the whole kind of world opens up when you when you interact with someone um in that way i wonder if this person has had their first kiss right before this song ah because it's such a it, 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 the, you have to assume that if the, if the character is singing a song it's coming out of something that ha like they have to do it and so you need to come up with something that's high stakes like that ah. um so could you uh, oh think of that and make the whole thing a slow burn to, um, I'm gonna start the sentence over again. This is like something that I do. Sorry, this is the way my brain works. Um, the way that it's written is genius. When I was a little girl, da, 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 it all stays down here. Then it gets da, 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 and it grows. And then eventually da, 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 it's pointing you in the general shape. Like you can draw a general shape around those notes. It's not just kind of arbitrary and all over the place. And it's created to build a certain dramatic um, journey through the song which you do so amazingly well with. Um, and of course, Tina smashes. So um, can you try not to, and you may not be doing this, but I think of, uh, sometimes I think of music either horizontal or vertical. When you think of phrases and, and kind of, uh, of, of course that's, that's horizontal. Some people think, do I love you, my oh my, river deep, mountain high versus do I love you, my oh my, what the long shape of it is. Can you make the entire thing a slow burn to the end, a slow rising all the way to the end, versus like, this is going to change a little bit. And we're going to see if it works or not. And if it doesn't, it's okay. Okay. It gets stronger. I've been getting the words wrong. But when you get to that B section, don't necessarily think it's the time to shift all the way up to the top. Like, still think of that as, if, if the beginning is a two, by the end of the first part, the second section might be a five. So it gets stronger day by day, whatever the lyric is, is a five. And then don't let us get to like an eight or a nine or a 10 until the very, very end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's just see what that gets us. It may not get us anything, but if you know, <laughs> we can hear you sing it again. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Let's see. I was a little girl. The only doll I ever know. Now I love you just the way I love that rag doll. The moment now my love is gone. Yeah, 
sorry to do that in the middle of it. Um, okay, can I'm going to be nitpicky because you're already so good. Can you take the smile out of the top? Take the smile off? Of the top, I think. Uh -huh. Be stunned by it first. Ooh, okay. Be stunned by the kiss first, I wonder. Okay. And then, like, discover the joy of it by the end. And just see where that happens. Just kind of be okay. open to it. So we're going from one place to another. Right. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I was a little girl, I had a rat nose, the only doll I ever owned. How I love you just the way I love that rat nose, only now my love is And it got stronger every word. Good job. Um, yeah, and great adjustment. Great, great adjustment. How'd you feel about that? Did it feel weird? That, that was really fun, because like you said, um, that first kiss, and like, you know, you're just always like, wow, did I just do that? Or like, did I feel something from that? Yeah. Yeah. Really, <laughs> it, it took me out of the whole world of Tina. I just like was in a whole nother show. Like, exactly, oh and that's the gig, y'all. That's the gig. You find it for yourself. Because that, I mean, I've heard that song, as we all have, anybody who's sat in an audition room has heard that song a trillion times. But I promise you, the, I, I chuckled a little bit while you were singing, because it's the first time I understood the my oh my, ever. Right. The first, or the, the, um, like, when you said, I mean, what you did was perfect for the camera, too, this whole new Zoom um, virtual thing. It was so subtle, but real. Because um, you said, um, do I love you? And then my oh my was like the surprise at it it was very subtle what you did but it was so beautiful so i hope that we all kind of caught that now i want us all to notice that she didn't move a whole lot right she didn't she wasn't all out uh, anywhere outside of like in the frame where she was standing and it was still a, i mean i don't know how you felt about it but for me it was still a captivating performance um so i hope that demonstrates to even um folks that are kind of watching um that aren't in the class you don't have to do a whole lot. Um, <laughs> you're such run through the room, but you don't have to do a, um, you don't have to do a whole lot in order to um, in order to deliver a message. Um, think of, I mean, those of us who had parents like this. Think of your mother saying, "If you don't stop right now, it's very small and subtle, but the consequence is big, right?" So you don't have to do a whole lot in order to to convey a message um, and let that be proof. Now, I will say, for the sake of time, I uh, Taylor and I, those of you who are listening, came up with a sort of little bit plan to turn the song on its head a little bit. But for the sake of time, I actually don't want to do that. And I love the beautiful discoveries that we made already. Do you mind if I press forward and if we have time, circle back? That's fine, yeah. Great, awesome. Yeah, beautiful work. Yeah, so beautiful. Um, and again, obsessed with the, the whole vibrato thing. Love it. Thank Good you. Stuff. What, what are you doing now? What are, are you, um, what are you doing now, creatively? Um, <laughs> I or, what, or what have you done recently? I'm interested. What have I done recently? So I live in Philly. Um, I recently, I had booked um, leading actor in Pippin, but um, due to COVID, canceled. Yep. canceled. So pretty much, um, I love teaching and I love um, giving back, especially since how my upbringing with theater was. Um, so pretty much, I've just been like finding new ways to teach through online lenses, um, especially with mm -hmm. TikTok. But yeah, just teaching and trying to just stay on top of the craft while yeah stay on top of your craft please yeah yeah um yeah be encouraged don't be discouraged thank you yep um okay let's uh Savan. is it is it terrible yes. to spring it on you that quickly 
No, you are perfectly fine. <laughs> awesome. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so we talked about doing one second and a million miles. Yes. Um, can you talk to us about the song? Just assume that we don't know the song at all. Okay, perfect. Um, it comes at the end of the show, Bridges of Madison County. Um, the, it's actually a duet, um, which I love because you, you know where this, your scene partner is coming from. Um, but so pretty much there is this couple. Um, the woman is married. Um, she met a man. They've had a couple day um, affair, fling. Um, and he is trying to get her to come with him away to live the life that they feel that they should live together. Um, while she's like, I have a life here already. And so there's just that um, push and pull. Um, and yeah, right before my cut, um, the question that um, uh, my person in the song is asked, um, how can I go with you? Like, how can I pack a bag, leave my life? How can I go with you? And then his response is where my cut starts. Okay, let's start the cut right from there. While it's fresh. Alrighty. I can tell you I know what the answer will be. It's impossible, but this thing, this is bigger than what we can see. This is destiny. We are tied, we are locked, we are bound. This will not be reversed or unwound. Whatever fate the stars are we. We're not breaking, I'm not leaving, and you and I are just one second, spinning by in just one second, you and I have just one second. All my life I have been falling All my life I have been falling Into you and I Have just one second And a million miles to go Come with me Okay, <clears throat> now, excellent, excellent. So um, I hope it's clear to everyone that, now I'll, I'll say, you must have done subtext, Ricky, you understand the subtext of the song. Um, your moment before is like so, so clear because you volunteered obviously, and your handling of the song is just so masterful. So um, why does the song resonate to you? Is there a reason? Um, well, uh, with Jason Robert Brown specifically, I feel like, so much of his music, just when I hear it, I just feel it. I, I feel yeah. it in my gut. In, and like you were talking before, even in ways sometimes you can't fully like understand, like when you hear it for the first time, you just have an emotional response. Um, with this one, I, uh, we've talked a lot about relationships. Um, everybody's song kind of deals with them, but like it, just when I hear it, I just feel it. I, I feel yeah. it in my gut. In, and like you were talking before, even in ways sometimes you can't fully like understand, like when you hear it for the first time, you just have an emotional response. Um, with this one, I, uh, we've talked a lot about relationships. Um, everybody's song kind of deals with them, but like, it's one of those things like you, you have your idea of what it is and somebody else may have theirs or their hesitations. Um, and it's just like, take the chance. Um, we are, we're just one second. We're this small thing. So it, it, it doesn't really matter, but it does to us. Like this is our one second, um, yeah. if that makes any sense. It makes all the sense in the world, yeah. Um, and I love that. I mean, it's obviously so clear to you that you're bringing yourself. And the reason why I asked was just to kind of demonstrate that you're bringing some element of yourself. You haven't even talked about an episode where it applies, but I have to assume that you've been through something even on your own that you're able to identify what that emotion is and articulate it. It's so, it's so beautiful and, and clear. Um, you haven't run into any challenges with the song anywhere, have you? It sure doesn't sound like it. 
Um, well, I've definitely gotten a little less warm since I rehearsed before we got on our call. Um, yeah. But I've never, um, I've never worked on this song yet, but it's one that I, through this, when listening to stuff during the past couple months, I knew I wanted to kind of start yeah. in circulation working on, so that's why I brought it Great. today. Um, the high note that you um, do at the end, which actually, I mean, the little cracky moment that you had, and let that be a lesson to all of us. It's not that big of a deal. Like, if it happens, everybody in the room knows what that is. And so if it happens, don't let that destroy your audition. I've seen it happen, where people will, you know, get so anxious about a note that they just messed up that they lose focus on the rest of it. So I love the way you negotiated that. Um, there's a moment in the song that happens i wrote down what happens in that break moment i think there's uh it's start, i started uh, measure 100 okay. um the break is she she finishes my um phrase and says in a million miles to go and when she says go is when i come within all my life i've been falling uh oh and you say all my life i've been falling twice right yes mm -hmm. um the question that I had was, uh, I think it happened just after the, the breaky moment. I, I didn't, I didn't sense, I sensed that your mind was on the break and not what was happening in the moment. Of okay, course. that's what I'm reacting to. Never mind. Then I don't, I don't have a note for that. Then normally, like, you hit that note and you're fine, and then you know what the specificity of that break is, right? right? Great, great, great. So I don't have any notes about that. Um, yeah, your storytelling is so clear. Like, that's, that's one of the things, like, I wanted to have you in the class because you're a great demonstration of what that subtext work and i know you haven't worked on the song but still your just innate um understanding of the the emotion in that story is very very clear so i love that that you've allowed us to um to see you do that now can i spring something on you yes please can can you sing one of these other ones now i'm interested in both but i know that for the sake of time i should only have you do one so uh wheels of a dream or everybody says don't which, which one are you which one is on your heart um let's say wheels of a dream great um, now, uh, just the fast forward version, what's, what's happening right before? We all know Wheels of a Dream. Who does not know Wheels of a Dream? It's okay if you don't. Great. It's okay, Johan. You're good. Get out. No, I'm kidding. Um, great. So, uh, so it's, you'll hear it. It's, it's a really beautiful big song. So uh, in this version, what happens right before? Um, so pretty much we're turn of the century, um, 1900s. And um, this is a black couple that just had a baby. And um, the uh, father of the child um, has enough money to get a car. And um, I think I can't, it's been a while since I've seen the show, but it, the run in is before this moment. I think um, they're kind of, they're driving on a private street and of course they're black. And so uh, that comes with its tensions, but they have their baby son and they can look at him and see um, that he can ride on these wheels of a dream, this kind of metaphorical wheels of a dream, and um, that he will have a better life in America. And while we're still working towards that, I think that it's still something um, good to have in our hearts. Beautiful. Great explanation. Let's, uh, let's hear it. A country that lets a man like me own a car, raise a child, build a life with you, with you. Beyond that road, Beyond this lifetime, that car full of hope will always gleam with the promise of happiness and the freedom he'll live to know. He'll travel with head held high just as far as his heart can go. And he will ride, our son will ride on the wheels of a dream. 
Yeah, great job. Yeah, so now what I, that's another great demonstration of either just an, an innate gift, which you clearly have, or um, homework that has been done on that song. Like, I know exactly how that character feels. We should all be delivering, like, material. To, like, that should be the bar. Do we believe it? And that's actually, you know, again, another, another life lesson. Do we believe it or do we not believe it? Um, and as artists, you always want to convey something that people believe. That's what they're, you know, people know when something is, you know, they smell it when you're faking it. Um, and, and what you're doing is such a beautiful job, Savon, of, of showing us um, how storytelling can just be very clear without a whole lot of like reliance on physical even. Like you're giving us just enough physical and everything that you're doing physically is being birthed out of something that's happening emotionally. Um, and so it's just such a beautiful, beautiful job that you're doing. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of n notes. The, the one technical thing I would say is like support like the, the support your notes so you don't crack at the end. Like the, that's not even really a note. It's like you already know that. Um, so yeah, beautiful, beautiful work. And uh, I'm sure our paths will cross again at some point. Thank you so much. Yeah, beautiful, thank you. Um, okay, uh, Stephanie, how you feeling? Hi, I'm good. <laughs> awesome. Feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so can, uh, we talked about doing Pretty Funny, which yes. is from Dogfight, which I will say, I conducted off Broadway at second stage, um, and it is my favorite. I, I see um, Justin uh, Paul every once in a while. Every time I see him, I'm sure he's sick of me telling him. I tell him that Dogfight is still my favorite book I've ever played. My favorite piano book of any theater song, uh, any theater show that I've played. It's just the music is gorgeous and it's so emotional. Um, and the way that Justin writes, um, like it just fits into your hands so nicely, and and it, it's. It's muscular where it needs to be muscular, and it's sensitive when it needs to be sensitive. And this song, I cried in that fit every single oh. show. Because it was, I think, the close of the first act or something like that. Yeah. Um, so it was, it yeah. was like, it was perfect because then you could just like run to the bathroom and get some, oh, you know, wipe your eyes off. But yeah, it, it, it's such a beautiful, gorgeous moment. Um, and so for everyone watching, I have forced Stephanie into seeing this. She made the mistake of suggesting this is one of her songs. And so I've, <laughs> I've asked her to do it. And so she's kindly agreed to do it. Um, so um, if you wouldn't mind, I would actually like for you to uh, just launch into it. Don't even give us the moment before yet. Do you, or, do you know what the moment before is? Yes. Have you worked it out for yourself? Great, mm -hmm. perfect. So then let's, let's sing it and then let's talk about it after. All okay. right. All disasters have an upside You can find one if you try You were dancing, you were dancing You were dancing with a guy Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny? Are you funny? Pathetically naive and desperate to believe you can always find some good. Well, you misunderstood. Or you've been dreaming Cause people are just cruel Yeah, beautiful. But in, inside me, I heard the rest of the song going until I was kind of waiting for the next part. But anyway, that's just because I love the song. Um, what a beautiful um, performance of it. Um, here's the exercise that I'd like to do with you. Um, oh, talk to us about the moment before. What is the moment before for you? Well, right before it was the first time uh, she has ever been invited on a date or even been really looked at by a, a guy. And she finally goes on this date and she's so excited. And then when she's there, she finds out that it's the dog fight. And then that's where she meets someone in the bathroom, basically validating them all the the men that she's been encountering are just playing with her and that they're all dogs, basically. And uh, she just told uh, 
Bird Lace that she hopes that when he goes back to the military, uh, to the military, he's gonna die. Uh, she hopes to never see him again because she found out that he was just playing around with her. He was just not into her. So her first date is just banished from her and it was all just her illusions, I guess. <laughs> Great. So just before she starts singing, she tells this guy, I hope you die. Yeah. Um, and then has the moment to herself where she's kind of faced with what her reality is, this revelation mm -hmm. that she's had. Yeah. Um, I, there's a, there's a, I'm trying to think of how to say this. You're, the stories that you're telling, um, oh, how, how does she feel about that? Let me, let me approach it that way. How does she feel about what's just happened? I, I think for her, it's, it's, it's almost heartbreaking. It's the, it's, that was the glimmer of her hope of her, I guess, coming out of her innocence and really growing up and being independent, like maybe finding some love and it was just taken away from her when she finally had attention. Yeah. So she might be, I used the word stunned earlier. Um, she might be stunned by yeah. what just happened. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to intersect that with the thought that sometimes, this may seem like it's out of left field, but I hope it has a connection. Um, if you're acting in a scene where it, you're, there's an, a crying, uh, there's, a, there's an indication that you might cry, it might be more powerful not to. Because for an audience to see a character fight through, like, you know, when we, when, when, whenever I've cried, there, like, before you say, ah, oh, now I have to do it. It's like you fight it first. You don't yeah. want it to happen necessarily. Like you fight it, um, and then uh, you have to kind of release yourself into it. And that fight le might last for a while. I wonder if this character fights through that. Um, and wh what you're giving me is a very clear indication that you're um, that you're displeased, obviously, with what's going on. But I wonder, and this is the equivalent of a line reading, I know it's so bad to do this, um, but I wonder if it's just more of a vacant thing, like what just happened? Can you sing it once with that? Um, and it may force you to use your face a lot less, but I think it's gonna serve you. There's a beauty in the simplicity. And one of the reasons why I think, for me, I'm, I'm just speaking for Jason, but for me, whenever I heard that song, the simplicity is what cut through me. Um, and because we're on a Zoom and we see everything that's happening in your face and every physical choice that you make, if you simplify that, like when you're, when, when things that have happened in my life that have stunned me, I haven't been able to be like, why did that happen? It's like you sit there and you go like, what was that? Um, so I wonder if you give us a little bit of a kind of, be a little bit more stunned and, and a little, I think, deactivate a lot of what you've kind of pre-programmed in your face and your body. Just try that. Great work so far. All disasters have an upside. You can find one if you try. You were dancing, you were dancing. You were dancing with a guy. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny? Are you funny? Pathetically naive and desperate to believe you can always find some good. Well, you misunderstood, or you've been dreaming. Cause people are just cool. Yeah, for me, uh, you leave me so much room to connect with you emotionally when you approach it that way. Um, so did that feel different? Yeah, I, I feel like, like not I enough? disappeared for a second. Oh, did you? Yeah, I just went, uh, yeah, I just 
like left. <laughs> I, that, I mean, I think that worked. <laughs> I, think that, I think that worked for the performance. Yeah, I, I think that for, for you in this song, simplicity is the way to go. Yeah, cause, and you already understand like the, the camera and the frame. Um, it's the simplicity that I think you're gonna latch onto and it's gonna serve you well. Yeah. Cool, thanks, Stephanie. Yeah. Um, good stuff, and RJ. Hello. Hello, you've been waiting for life to begin all this time. Yes, I have. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, you're, you're doing a song that a lot of us love. I know I love this song. Um, yes. So this is, this is almost like singing and I am telling you, right? Cause like everybody knows that there's an expectation. Um, so what happens uh, for you when you go into an audition um, right before? What's your moment before in, uh, for this song? My moment before for this song is just tapping into myself in a way, since I relate to this character so much because I'm still trying to find my purpose. I tap into like that side of my brain where it's like, what am I doing? Am I, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? That's the mindset I get into when I'm going into an audition to sing this song, so. Okay, um, and as the character, like um, eventually you're going to be saying, oh, what's the first lyric? What's the first lyric that you sing in your cut? Oh God, oh God, are you there? Great, so why does that character say that? Like what happened right before that that made her say that? Like, were they like, peace, I'm out. And then they left, like, like let's, let's talk about like an event that happened right before. Right before I saw a guy driving in a car and it triggered something in me, thinking about why I was saved and what my purpose is in life since I was saved, basically, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, great. So t uh, read me the first couple lyrics. So God, oh, uh, God, oh, God, hear my prayer. Or t uh, Tell me what the lyrics are. Oh, God, oh, God, are you there? Don't you remember your little T moon from the tree? Wake up, look down, please. Oh, wait. Hear my prayer. Don't single me out and then forget me. Great. Um, okay. So, oh, God, oh, God, are you there? So she is talking to people who are not there. Um, and so there's a certain enthusiasm to that. Uh, trying to think of something to relate to the moment before, but you know what, let's, let's sing it through and then I think I'm gonna have a thought after that. Oh God, oh God, please be there. Don't you remember you little team What a great song and you do such a great job with it and i love how you shaped it um thank you the unsurety of the front did not match the you know what happened at the end you took us from one place to another fantastic um everyone should be thinking um where am i at the beginning where am i at the end and there should be a difference if it's if it's a good musical theater song there's a difference between the two so if you, you have to assume by the time you've gotten the song that homework has been done so it's your job it's, and even if it's a poorly written song it's your job to find the beginning, the middle, and the end. As an artist, like you should be excited about finding what that thing is and finding the, the new, uh, the new version of it. Now, um, so waiting for life to begin. Just before you start singing, 
Uh, what did you say the, mo uh, the moment before was? The um, actual moment just before, just before she starts singing. She sees a stranger in white in a car driving. <laughs> oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, great, I love that answer. Um, so, and when she sees the stranger in white, she, oh God, oh God, are you there? Don't single me out. Don't you remember Little T Moon from the Tree? So is, is she asking for who she just saw? Is she asking the gods for who she just saw? I'm sorry, say that again? Is, is when you say that the moment before, she sees the man in the car. Mm-hmm. And so she is asking the gods, like I'm trying to connect, I'm trying to get us to see the connection between that moment and what happens right after that. So when she's saying, oh gods, oh gods, are you there? What is she asking them for? That she's, man? I, I think so. I think she's in a way asking for that man and masking it as asking for what she's supposed to be doing, if that makes sense. Oh, what you're supposed to be doing, like what your purpose is? Yes. Got it. And the gods have control of that, and that's why she's asking the gods for that. Yes. Great. Awesome. Um, I would love, one, because you sounded so fantastic, I want you to do it, do it again, but also I want us to um, think, I think that was a little bit more clear. I have a little bit more clarity for myself on what your moment before is, so I would love to hear it one more time, if you don't okay. mind. Great. Great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Please be there. Don't you remember your little team from the tree? Wake up, look down, hear my prayer. Don't single me out and then forget me. Oh, God. Great demonstration of what we what we just talked about. Um, that's all I got for you. Beautiful job. Thank you. Awesome. Great work, everyone, with uh, with these performances. Um, I I would love to move. If if you guys don't have questions, I would love to answer any questions that you have or anything that you'd like to say or share with each other or or whatever. If anyone has anything, I love a good question. Or if you've heard any good music, yeah, Taylor, let's do it. Uh, um, two. Um, one from, I'm not sure, I wrote it down. Um, mm -hmm. You had, when Alex was singing, you recommended the microphone. And I just wanted clarity. Would you um, recommend it for specifically like rehearsals or master classes like this? Would you recommend it for a self tape? Well, you definitely should have a microphone that is not your laptop microphone if you're going to be doing self tapes. It's just, it's going to help you. Um, and I mean, there's like, you know, road mics um i mean r-o-d-e that's just like one of the brands but there's different th i think this is for like an actual like camera camera like this kind of odd bam but um but they're the they make microphones that are basically it, the simple way to look at it is like boom mics that you they use on a set that will capture the sound in a room okay. so it's omnidirectional yeah so that's that's kind of what you want so that you're like even if you're doing a non-musical self-tape you have you and probably a reader in the room that still has to be picked up. And so you want a microphone that's going to not be directional. Like Alex has, a, I'm sure, a great 
um, podcast mic that like when you're right on it, it works and it does a great job of isolating that so you don't get a lot of room sound. But if you're in, if you're auditioning, you might want to, unless you're going to wear a lapel mic, like some kind of, you know, thing that you do here that's going to be very specific, then you want something that's kind of like a boom that's going to capture the room. So something that's omnidirectional. Okay. And like, it won't show in the tape or anything because like you could just clip it, I think, from mm -hmm. what I see on your laptop. Okay. Yep. Yep. Or just put it like right outside the frame. Like, cause right now, like you, if this mic was right here, it would pick me up great, but you can't see the actual mic. It's right there. Bam. Mm. So just figuring out, figuring out where to put it in the frame. And wh while you work out what your television, like what your frame is, you just make that part of it. Where to place that thing. Can I ask one more? Of course, please. Okay. Um, you kind of spoke about this throughout the class, but other than the talent, what are things that you're looking for as soon as they come into the, um, as soon as we come into the audition room, um, other than talent? I know you spoke a little bit about, um, am I going to be, am I going to want to be around them in the rehearsal mm -hmm. space? Is there any other things you look for? Yeah, I mean, that, those are kind of blanket statements, and I make those kind of safely um, because th those you definitely want. Like, you want to make sure that a room feels good. Just like when you meet people, you know whether or not they've left a good impression on you and whether or not you want to be around them again. And so walking into the room, and it's very simple. It's just like having a positive vibe. You, you're, you're happy to be there. You love that they've taken this time to, um, you know, that you're going to share this time together, and you've got this awesome thing that you want to share. Um, and I hope you like it. And I know that if you like, this is what you would say to yourself. Like, I know that if I don't get this gig, it's not really about me. So it's like, I can relax about this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think a level of, like I said, the audition starts as soon as you walk in the room, just kind of know if there's an accompanist, acknowledge the accompanist, like everybody in the room is important and how you treat people is important. So, um, making yourself friendly there, if you first, like, it, when you first get to New York, there's a certain greenness to, or, or LA, I don't really know the LA um, audition scene very well, but I, I know that in, the, in New York, you, you would find people with resumes that they just got out of school that are very, very promising that come into a room with a certain kind of promising, exciting energy to be there. And that's just part of it. You just go in and you put that time in. Um, and there are some people who come out of school and, and they just do it. That, that kind of, quality of being happy to be in the room and willing to come and play it moves them if it and it's their time they do it there was one um, uh, cast member in color purple who i think was right literally right out of school i don't think it worked much between school and the audition and was willing to uh come in and play and have a great time in the room and her gift was uh you know her gift made room for her and her spirit made room for her and so we brought her into the family and, it, and the color purple was still one of the most glorious, beautiful theatrical um, experiences that, that I've ever had just because it was full. It was a room full of people who brought that vibe, who brought the, Hey, I'm here. We have this awesome thing. We, we had a great director who, who left us a lot of room to kind of play and discover. And he was very kind of firm with the executive management of what happened creatively in the room. Um, and because the director is making those level of choices um, that may affect you, like you might get in your feelings about some choice that the director made, a director doesn't want to deal with that. Right. Um, and a music, I mean, I, I don't want to say like, I don't want to deal with that, but I don't want to deal with that. Um, if there's this note, like I want you to sing and, and there's a little bit of a resistance, this almost never happens by the way, but I'm using this as an extreme example. It's like, there's a note that I'd like you to sing and you have a bunch of reasons why you shouldn't sing it. It's like, okay, I'm all about collaboration, but you have to be able to read a room and see who you're working with and, and know the energies that you're dealing with. Um, and no one in this class is in danger of, of doing anything wrong. Like everyone's vibe is very, very good. And all you do is carry that. Like, don't forget that we're all real people. Like we're all still people. Even when you look at, I mean, no, maybe not Beyonce, Rihanna, but everybody besides like Beyonce and the Rihanna's of the world are like, just like normal people. Um, so, so just know that. And that we're all kind of, you know, we're, we're all struggling to make great art um, and looking for cool people to do that with. And all you got to do is be a cool person who has a great contribution to make because we're all contributing. Like, like those of us at the top, like we're not really running stuff. We're, we're still contributing. We're still trying to create something that's really going to move, you know, move us um, and then in turn move somebody who we put in front of. So that's what I got for that. I went around the block to go next door, but sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Alexander. 
sort of going off of that, but in terms of like virtual spaces now, because that's like the one thing I really miss. Like I'm a big people person. And I yeah. love like, walking into a room, too. Just, like becoming friends with everyone, no matter what happens. Like if I don't book it, like whatever, at least I had fun and like got to know someone yeah. and work with them. But mm-hmm. now that we're in this like virtual like space, you know, I haven't had many theater auditions, self tapes as of late, because, you know, not really much going on. So it's, yeah, been a, it's lot a different climate. Film stuff, exactly. What, I guess, like, without going too crazy, should you, you know, a lot of the times they'll say, like, slate, say your name, where you're from, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes they don't. When we slate, should, should we give more than just, like, hi, I'm Alexander Rios. Like, I'm reading for the role of jo- Joe, you know? Is, should I be like, hey, you know, this is about me? Because a lot of times I, I feel like I don't want to take up their time. Whereas if I'm in a room mm-hmm. at work, I can just be like, yeah, hey, you know, I'm Alexander. It's more natural to, like, say that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tricky negotiation, right? Yeah, um, I yeah. think that um, – I don't know if you should go too super crazy with the slate. Like, okay. a slate, I don't think, is an opportunity to, to show all of your personality <laughs> necessarily. But yeah. if, you, if, like, if you're like, hey, what's up, I'm Alexander, like, the, the what's up gives, like, There's enough of an indication. Yeah, yeah. and, and we, we can feel – your vibe in the spaces in between i think um and and when it comes to on camera stuff i think you're selling your talent first anyway um so you can you can bring a positive vibe into a a self-tape but it's going to you're still going to have some vibe work to do after that um like when you start meeting um like even hopping on the phone or hopping on zooms with with people and and interacting that way hopefully that's that's helpful yeah, but I, I also too, probably like when you submit, like with like Actors Access, you get a, a, a chance to like send a note, maybe saying, maybe maybe you can use that as like a, a moment to like say something about yourself or something. I don't know. I just thought. Yeah, of it. I mean, I, mean, I, show, I, I don't want to say don't do anything in your slate right. that shows your personality, but I, again, don't use it enough an opportunity to be like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like no, 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 could create no. a whole parade oh, out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Cool. Thank awesome. you. Of course, my pleasure. Um, One of the... uh. This has nothing to do with anything, but uh, man, the, uh, when I say my pleasure, I always think of this. Uh, there's a friend of mine who we used to do, you know, parties when you can have parties, um, and there would always be a performance. Like the community is a bunch of artists, um, and so there would always be a performance. And there's the this one uh, singer who's fantastic, who she has this character that she plays that's just so bitter about the job that she's got that anytime somebody says uh, thank you, she's forced to say my pleasure, but she doesn't want to. So they're like, thank you. She's like. My pleasure. Anyway, it has nothing to do with anything, but that was the thought that happened in my head. Um, in the Q&A um, box, uh, there, uh, there were two questions that I would um, love to, Auntie Dana, hey, Auntie Dana. Um, Taisha McGuire says, what was the largest leap of faith you've had to take in your career? And it's funny that you say leap of faith because for me, um, Alan Menken is very important. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors is the reason why I you know, fell in love with theater. And so for me, one of my bucket life, like bucket list life goals was for Alan Menken to know my name. And so um, I got to the way that I've kind of, um, the way that I think you, everyone should probably build their career, it's probably a good way to do it, um, is to do the best that you can. And when you realize that you've reached the point of, uh, of capacity and that you have more to give, shift the gear up and go to the next thing. And then when you reach capacity, shift the gear up and go to the next thing. Um, and so one, in one of my gear shift moments, um, I had decided that I wasn't going to um, associate music direct anymore. Is this, I hope I'm telling the story correctly. This, this is a technique that I've used in my life. I'm just now questioning what, if I'm saying the right show. Um, but uh, I decided that I wasn't going to associate music direct. I was only going to music direct. Um, and then I kind of offer... Oh, actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I do have the shows mixed up, but this story is actually, um, just in case anybody's going to fact check me, I want to make sure that I'm saying the right thing. Um, but the, the show that I'm actually talking about is Violet, but I'll, I'll say Leap of Faith. Uh, I, I ended up doing the, the Leap of Faith show because it was an Alan Macon show and I wanted Alan Macon to know who I was. Um, and so uh, the question that says, what's the largest Leap of Faith that you've had to take in your career? It makes me think of that moment where, uh, where I, I took a, uh, a gig that, uh, that enabled me to meet someone that I really, really wanted to. Now, the actual story that I wanted to tell about the leap of faith, the actual leap of faith, is when I was doing one show music directing and decided that I wasn't going to associate music direct, I actually took the, um, I took the associate music directing gig 
Um, I was doing Motown at the time and I took Violet while I was doing Motown as the associate because I loved Janine Tesori so much. And I wasn't exactly sure how it was going to work out career-wise. Like in the middle of one show, you leave to do another one and then it's, a, it's like a step down. And so you, that, what message does that send? All that craziness. But it was a, it was a show that I loved so much that uh, you know, I, had, I had to take it and I had to take that time off of another great show um, in order to do it. And I felt like that was the leap of faith. Um, oh, and I'll, I'll say there's one other question um, Evan said in the Q&A. Um, going back to what you said about giving repeated lines different meetings, how can I tell what emotions or thoughts to give to the lines when repeating them? The beautiful part of it is you get to decide. You get to decide. And there's no wrong answers as long as they're different. I mean, try them out. You know when something is truthful or not. So let's say that the line is um, like, I want to go or I want to go home. So how do you feel about I wanting to go home? There's, there's so many different ways to feel about that. You might not want to go home. It might be the most amazing thing that you've been waiting for your entire life. So if you're saying that same I want to go home line three or four times to a character for a specific reason, because you have to be, because it's a line and all lines, like acting is action. So if you're acting this line, there must be an action in there somewhere that you, if you don't know what it is, you need to go in there and find it. And whatever action that is, just escalate that action each time. So if you're, uh, if you're talking to someone uh, and the line is, in the song is three times, I want to go home, I want to go home, I want to go home. Maybe the first time the person may, uh, you think they're going to give it to you the first time because you really, really want to go home. I want to go home. Then they don't give it to you. Now you got to say it. Maybe they didn't hear you. And so you're a little frustrated and a little more persistent. And then at the last time, uh, they finally hear you and they agree to let you go. And then you can kind of release yourself into it. Like, that's probably like the right answer. But my point is, you can do that exercise and just assign three different meetings, try it, listen back. And if it's truthful, you're going to know it. Um, and then, and that way you don't have to rely on someone else to find that emotion because as the artist, it's your job to find that anyway and to deliver it. That's what we're here for. We're here to, we're here to receive the gifts that you prepared for us. And, and, uh, everyone that's on this call, and I'm sure a lot of people at home, uh, that are that are listening, uh, your gift will make room for you. And finding what that gift is, and identifying what those uh, what those special parts that you've been given um, that are different from everyone else, find out what those are, because that's that's the joy that we find um, when we're sitting in an audience and see a performance perform operating in their truth. Um, so find what your purpose is. And again, this I've said a couple times, this is like a life class, not a music class. I am talking about music, but I'm talking about life too. Find your truth, find your purpose, and find what what gifts you've been given and give them back to us because we all need it. Like we we all can't even wrap our arms around each other anymore. So now we need to find even more ways to um, connect. Um, and the gift that we all are cultivating right now, even me, it's not just like, you know, I'm some industry professional and y'all are just starting out. So there's some qualitative, quantitative difference, whatever. There isn't. Like I'm still working and trying to figure out and growing and being passionate and, and the passion that you feel right now for what's to come doesn't change when you get in there. Like I'm still passionate about what happened and what's about to happen and uh, meeting new talent like this. So, and that's part of what I feel like my purpose is in, in like what part of what my contribution is to the world. Um, so uh, the same job that I feel like I've done, I would love for you on to do. And I feel like you're already on that path, finding what your purpose is, identifying your gift and using it to spread that love energy through the world. That's all I got for y'all. Thanks for singing. Thanks for hanging. I hope we get a chance to do it again. Unbelievable. A major, major thank you to Jason oh. and Alexander, Savan, Jaheem, Taylor, RJ, Sydney, Stephanie. These gifts that you shared, it's unbelievable. And we're so, so thrilled that you joined us for this evening. And to everyone who watched at home, thanks for hanging in. And thank we hope you. to see you next time. Thank you so much. See you. Good night, everybody.